Alrighty, it is time for another news video. Yay! Okay, so firstly, I want to thank Nico for giving this channel a shout out on his news show. I think a lot of you came over from there and subscribed, so thank you if you did and welcome. The first item is about Sinistil. Now, I'm not going to go into all of the drama. What I am going to say is um, we wrote an article on this on 35MMC. We got a statement from Sinistil and we asked Cat Labs if we could use... so sort of the like major parties involved or the big parties involved that were sort of creating this this um, drama or controversy or whatever, uh, we did sort of go to them and uh, ask them for statements or if we could reference their uh, blog articles in, in the articles. So um, if you want the full details about what happened in a very unbiased, unopinionated article, then head over to the link in the description down below on 35mmc. There is like zero opinions in there. There is a new app out there for film photographers. It is called Crown and Flint. And okay, I'm just going to read what um, the like sort of headline for this is. So it's a new mobile app that helps analog photographers capture metadata and manage film collections from acquisition to archive. Easy to use as a handheld light meter, Crown and Flint is the digital companion for your analog lifestyle. Now, I love that. <laughs> so the app is available on both iPhone and Android, which is amazing because as an Android user, I am so used to having to wait for things. And it's awesome that the creator of this app, whose name is Dawn, is, did both at the same time. So uh, I've been actually beta testing the app and I really love it. Uh, and this is totally like not sponsored. This had a really nice conversation with Don about the app and uh, I'm gonna be writing a review for it soon on 35MMC. I've already posted a reel on my Instagram and I believe on YouTube as well, if you wanna check out sort of how the app looks. I mean, you can download it and test it for yourself. So there is a um, free version to trial and then the premium version costs less than like 20 pounds, which I think is a really good value because I think that's a lifetime. So, uh, and also talking to Don, there are some more features in the works and uh, it's, it's just really cool and I love it and you should definitely go check it out and download it. Okay, so another cool thing that's out is called the Frankenstax SQ40. Now, this is an Instax adapter for the Mamiya RB67. So if you have a Mamiya RB67, you might wanna listen up. <laughs> and also if you like shooting Instax. So basically this allows you to shoot Instax with your Mamiya RB67, which is awesome. This is created by Sam Cohen, who is from Denver, Colorado. He's redesigned the product around the new Fuji SQ40. And if you get a Frankenstax um, adapter for your Mamiya RB67, it comes with a custom hard case, a mask for the waist level viewfinder, and a steel dark slide. And the features of this, which this is important, so, if you know what a Mamiya RB67 is, you know that's a beast. Um, so basically, Sam has matched the durability of the Mamiya, and he has used a MJF P812 construction, which doesn't mean anything to me, but um, basically he's saying that he's sort of upped the durability of the Frankenstax to match the Mamiya RB67. So he says the Frankenstax SQ40 features nylon construction resistant to heat, impact, and chemicals. And then all additional hardware Frankenstax uses is stainless steel. Uh, okay, so limited numbers of the Frankenstax SQ40 will be available on the launch, which will be on October 31st, uh, which is coming up soon. And you can find that on the website. It's www.frankenstax.com. And I will leave that link down below. Uh, for easy clicking. So, okay, so moving on. Um, Lomography launched a Kickstarter for a new lens and it's called the Nor Triplet F2.0 Bokeh Control Art Lens. Okay, so basically this lens allows you to play with spherical aberration. And there are three settings on the lens that allows you to sort of control how much the spherical aberration is corrected in the lens. Um, so the campaign has gone over its goal, yay, uh, and it ends on November 3rd. So if you still want to get one of these lenses, you can still do so. 
um, and you just head over to the Kickstarter link uh, down below. I forgot to say, um, they're, bra they're brass and black aluminum lenses and can be adapted to full frame, mirrorless, Canon RF, Nikon Z, and Sony E mounts. Okay. All right, so this is something that Nico mentioned in his video that I've linked down below, but I just wanted to mention it again because it's so awesome. Uh, Street Candy ATM 400 is returning uh, thanks to Flick Film. So Flick Film is helping Street Candy sort of um, make Street Candy come back. Uh, they did it for their MTM 100 film. They're doing it now for the ATM 400. So they found a new source of this film. So the ATM 400 film is, it was originally used in surveillance cameras placed in ATM machines, which is why it's called ATM 400. Um, and each roll will come with 36 exposures and is priced around 10 90 euros per roll. Um, I am super glad this film is back because I love this film and I'm really excited to be able to have more of it and shoot more of it. Um, if you want to find out where to get it, I will link that below. Analog Wonderland and Camera Store have partnered together to bring some of Camera Store's stock to the UK, basically. So Camera Store, um, if you don't know what that is, um, I highly encourage you to check it out. It, they're based in Finland and they're connected with Camera Rescue. I believe it's all part of like the same stuff. And and actually, uh, I think that's where Nico works from Nico Photo Show. So they repair cameras, they sell cameras, and they've got this massive inventory, which is like awesome, but it's in Finland. So if you're based in the UK, um, you might be paying high shipping charges if you are buying cameras from them. Um, so Analog Wonderland has partnered with them to basically bring uh, some of their stock um, to the UK, but not only their stock, um, they're ensuring an 11 point health check system. So every camera will go through that and every camera will have a six month warranty. So it's not just about bringing like stock into the UK, it's, it's more about um, bringing good stock because, um, you know, you might search on eBay for cameras and they might, they might not be like, they might not say if it's broken or if it's working. Um, it might not be as reliable, you know, looking for cameras on eBay might not be as reliable, especially in my experience at my local camera store here in Cardiff. Uh, they might have a stock of used cameras, but they might not know much about them. And They've sold, they've definitely sold me some ones that like didn't really work in the past, even though they said they were working. Um, so having a place where you know it's reliable, you know you're going to get a working film camera, you know it's been checked out uh, by film camera experts, people that know what they're talking about, and that it is warranted for six months, um, that's pretty cool. So you can check that out, link below. Those will all be listed on Analog Wonderland's website. Um, you can go and see what they've got. They said they're going to do a limited supply at the beginning to kind of figure out what cameras people are looking for, what cameras people want, and then bring over sort of more of that. So, so uh, yes, go and check that out. Okay, so our next news story is about New Grain. And so this is a mobile app for film photographers. Uh, it is very similar to, we've covered Grainery on 35mmc before in the past. Um, but this was created by Tim Eisenman and Arish Tripathi. And they're actually both still university students. Um, but yes, they've officially launched their iOS app and they've also said that they're having plans for web and Android to come later. Now, this is a case of me being an Android user. I can't try out the app yet. So uh, Newgrain, it not only is like a sort of a social media platform without ads for film photographers, but they're also sort of building it into like a resource library. So um, they're making a massive film stock library and like metadata input so uh, people can see how you made your image. Um, and at the, I think, so after launch, it was up to almost 6,000 accounts with 10,000 posts and around 250 active daily users. So the app is free to sign up and they have no plans to change this. Um, however, to support the app going forward without ads in the future, they are going to introduce a pre premium subscription so um, and premium features. So I think that is coming in the future. Okay, so next story is about Vintage Visual. So uh, this Vintage Visual is a um, new company that was founded by Arno Piver from Estonia. 
And he has created, he's a mechanical engineer, and he created this new compact automated film processor that works with Patterson tanks. Um, so you basically attach the processor to the tank and it sort of, it will automatically run through the whole processing thing. There is, it's so cool, like, but the key piece of news here is that he launched the, the Indiegogo campaign and has like blown by his target. So that will be successful, that will be happening, um, which is awesome uh, because it's a compact automated film processor that people could use at home, but also like small labs can use it and community darkrooms, which is awesome because I think we need more, like one thing you hear a lot from film labs is that the equipment is outdated, it's old, it's hard to maintain, it's expensive to maintain, uh, and we need new equipment um, for film labs to continue, you know, moving forward into the future. So um, stuff like this is really exciting and I'm really happy to see Arno be successful. At the moment, as of today, there are 17 days left in the campaign. So if you still want to grab yourself one, then head over to the link down below and check it out. There is a shop called Hanalogital, and this is a shop based in Germany, and they do like film soups and pre-exposed films and experimental films. Um, so I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, them because they have released a couple of new seasonal film soup to films. Uh, autumn is out. I mean, summer's been out for a while, um, but also I recently saw on Instagram they're doing a new pre-exposed one called Leaks that actually looks really cool. Um, I think that's named after Light Leaks. So. Uh, yeah, go check that out. Hanalogital. If you are into experimental films and you're looking for some like cool, new, unique um, seasonal films to shoot, I will leave the link down below. But yes, there are some new ones in the shop there that are available. Uh, the only thing I'll say about film souped films or souped films is that please don't send them to a lab without asking the lab first or telling the lab because it can ruin their chemistry if they put it through their regular like C41 machines. So please don't do that. <laughs> Best bet is to process it at home with chemistry that you've saved for specifically uh, souped films. Another new product. Uh, so Forrester UK, which is um, led by Simon Forrester, released a new product at Analog Spotlight. So it's called the Platypus and it is a four by five drying rack. Now, if you haven't heard of Forrester UK before, um, he makes all sorts of things um, like lens caps, all sorts of like photo, 3D printed photo accessories. Um, so that was something cool that I got to see in person and it's, it looks really cool. Uh, I don't shoot 4x5 film, but um, if you do, it's definitely worth checking out. Something else exciting that was announced at Analog Spotlight 2023 uh was Harman Photo something is coming so unless you have been living under a rock you might have seen on social media on Instagram that people just all of a sudden started posting these like dark cards from Harman Photo saying like something is coming <laughs> so there is a new Instagram account it is called Harman Photo and they will be releasing something soon don't know when don't know what um, but go and follow them, go and follow the accounts if you want to stay updated for when they do release it. But there was another bit of news. Um, Seven Artisans launched an ultra-wide, a spherical 9mm f5.6 full-frame lens for E, R, F, Z, and L mounts. So this one is a manual focus lens, um, but it has 16 elements, 12 groups, including two spherical and two ED elements. And basically what these do is they reduce distortion. So Seven Artisans basically <laughs> describes it as approximate zero distortion, um, which is super cool for a nine millimeter lens. So if you are interested in that, then I will leave the link down below for you to go check out. So one more thing I want to say is that um, if you are into Super 8 film or if you want to get into it, um, so there is a competition, uh, I think it's based in the UK, but anyone can really enter. Uh, it's called Straight 8, and you can enter a, a film, a, a short film, basically one roll, you shoot one roll of Super 8 film, and uh, you, you make a film or a movie, there's different like categories of what you can do, and you enter into the competition along with a soundtrack, and you, so you basically shoot, you 
design your um, film and then you shoot it and then you just send everything off. Um, so you send the film and the, the soundtrack off to be processed um, by CineLab in the UK, uh, which is an amazing lab. And they put it all together and then the judges from Straight 8, they have like judges that go through and they select the top 25 and those get screened uh, for the first time, I believe at the Cannes Film Festival, which is super cool. Um, so so it's, it's, it's a really cool competition. It's a really cool thing. And then after that, um, I think they're gonna try and do a London premiere. They, they do um, tour it in a few other countries. Um, I met uh, Alex from Straight 8 in person at Analog Spotlight. He came and did a talk, which was amazing and super inspiring. And I would totally do it. Um, I mean, Super 8 is really expensive, but uh, I think doing the competition for the first time is a really good way to get into get into it. Um, it's not in my budget this year, but maybe next year, you know, you never know. Um, so competition entries for that close February 2024. So I just wanted to um, give a little shout out in this episode for that. Um, I am going to write like a more detailed article on 35mmc that I'm working on with Alex at the moment, um, but I just wanted to shout that out and if anyone was interested, I will leave the link below and you can go check it out. I think that's it. I mean, I, I will probably do a analog spotlight recap video uh, separate from this news video. Um, I'm like, I'm waiting for my film photos back from the lab because I took some on my phone and some video on my phone, but they're all like vertical. Well, that is it for this week. If you have any items of news that you see uh, that you think should be on here or that you want to be on here, um, just leave me a comment or drop me an email or drop me a DM on Instagram and let me know. Yeah, I will see you in a video uh, soon in the future. <laughs>